Hello, everyone, and welcome to my channel, my booktube channel, um, the John King Saga 7847. And welcome to uh, my first book review on this channel. Um, so this is the first uh, content I'm posting uh, other than page chewing. So um, for my first book review, uh, for those of you that know me, there could be no doubt what that book will be that I would like to review today and discuss. Uh, not so much discuss uh, because it's just me, I guess, unless I'm talking to myself, <laughs> but um, to uh, let you know about and talk about because I rave about this book. And that book is none other than To Ride Hell's Chasm or Chasm, however you pronounce it, by Jenny Wartz. So um, for most of you that are familiar with me, uh, my reviews, um, Jenny Wartz is my favorite author and this is my favorite sci-fi fantasy book of all time um and you know what after reading this book um the feeling i had upon completion um was that you know um why is this book uh, not more well known why is this book along with the author herself so criminally underappreciated you know Jenny is someone who's a published internationally best-selling book so over 20 of them She's been a fantasy mainstay for several decades. She's penned the Wars of Light and Shadow series, which is this millennia spawning, uh, completely sweeping tale of 11 books. And, it, and that compares favorably in terms of scope and depth, you know, with anything um, of its kind, including things like some of my other favorites, A Song of Ice and Fire and a Malazan, for the you Malazan fans, and The Wheel of Time. So, you know, Jenny's main series is in my opinion, definitely uh, as epic in scope and as iconic as that. Uh, this is a standalone book to ride Hell's Chasm, um, but it is simply masterclass. Um, but yeah, I don't have the answer to the question uh, why Jenny and this book in particular, um, you know, is not as well known. All I can do is hopefully with my review, um, encourage other readers to check out, you know, this legendary author that's Jenny and her phenomenal books. Uh, including this book. Okay, so um, why is this book so great? Um, well, let's talk a bit about, about the, the plot, a um, bit of a synopsis. So one of the things that Jenny does so well is that, I think it's a really clever feature of her writing, is that the heart of her plots, including this book, um, it, you know, it seemed really simple and straightforward, but they're anything but. Okay, is there anything but? Um, so um, this book is uh, set in the kingdom of uh, uh, Sicily. Um, it's um, this uh, wonderful um, kingdom, and uh, it's about this beautiful, uh, spunky, and beloved princess named Anja. And Anja is about to be betrothed uh, to whom it seems like is the perfect mate, um, this handsome and dashing uh, high prince uh, from a nearby a realm uh, known as a devil. Devil. So um, this, you know, dynastic match, it seems to be a love match um, as well. And, and both parties are completely besotted with one another. So, you know, things are looking great, um, looking up for the princess. Um, yet, you know, incomprehensibly, the princess disappears uh, the night of her betrothal banquet to this high prince. Um, so uh, what happens is foul play is quickly suspected. Uh, the king, uh, uh, Cecily, was once this you know sharp, sharp, capable uh, monarch, but he's descending into a bit of a dotage. Uh, the crown prince uh, and his elder brother, uh, who himself is very charismatic, you know, very attractive guy, you know, but he's a bit of a slacker and a carouser. Um, you know, there's some capable lords and ladies uh, in the court, but as typical in such environs, there's a lot of you know. Uh, hangers on and incompetence and um, a lot more self-absorbed nobles they're only out you know self-servingly for themselves they look up they, they look to profit actually on the princess's disappearance so um which is never good uh, so obviously now we start to suspect uh, who in the court could be involved in this disappearance but never fear there's one steely eye general uh lord commander taskin and uh, he is on the case of Anja's vanishing. Um, so Taskin is supremely confident. And I just want to, uh, if I can hold it up here, this is Taskin, this gentleman right here. Um, he's supremely confident. Uh, he's fair. And though he's aging, he's a brilliant warrior. 
And, um, you know, the king wants nothing more than, than he just, he, he wants Taskin to, to head to search for his daughter. So Taskin's the main man. Um, but the king also wants assistance of one of Taskin's subordinates, who is the captain of the city garrison. And that is Michael. So Michael's right here. Uh, and he wants Michael to help take up the trail before the trail goes cold and, and the chances of, of finding uh, Anja, you know, decrease um, beyond the ability to, to take up that trail. So, Mikio, Mikio, uh, forgive my pronunciation, um, it's spelled uh, M Y K K A E L. Um, so, uh, Mikio, like his superior, is impeccably competent. So, he's like Taskin, he's very competent. But he's also considered a foreigner, um, and he hails from a desert-like region of the world. Uh, he's black, uh, if you can see there. And uh, in contrast to the fair-skinned inhabitants of uh, Cecily, and um, Mikhail is also a mercenary, a former mercenary. And he won his crown commission, so to be appointed to the army uh, by merit, not by birth or connection. So he's, he, he, he doesn't have that. Um, so the rather haughty upper crust court, as well as many of the commoners in Cecily, they snub uh, Mikhail. They're suspicious of him, and they don't want him entangled with the disappearance at all. Um, so, as a matter of fact, um, they'd be they'd sooner suspect him of being involved, simply because of who he is and how he looks. So Taskin uh, does not completely trust Mikhail either, but. You know, Taskin is legendary for his objectivity, his fairness, and you know he he's willing to give enough rope uh, for Mikhail to potentially hang himself too, right? In case you know Mikhail uh, messes up and or if he's involved. So for Taskin, uh, Mikhail will either prove himself to be completely trustworthy and dedicated to finding the princess, or Mikhail will consider not right traitor and actually involved in the plot to abduct her. Okay, so. Um, then, unfortunately, in the middle of all this murder strike in the kingdom, and the identities of the murderers are unknown, and uh, Mikhail's foreign breeding and his unparalleled martial skills, so he's this, this, this exceptional warrior. Um, even though he is, um, he is injured, he has a long-term injury that leaves him somewhat disabled. So uh, Mikhail's breeding, um, you know, and the fact that he's very capable still, despite his and disability, and of course the prejudice of the populace against them make him an immediate suspect And um, in, in this disappearance and the murders now, the murders that have taken place. So as a result, Taskin's hand may be forced to, to shut Mikhail and his investigation down uh, permanently um, because of the political pressure that's mounting um, to take Mikhail off the board, right? They, not to have him involved at all. Um, so these murders obviously cast uh, cast aspersions, you know, you know, cast Mikio in further doubt. Um, but but is it all because Mikio is the only one with the skills and even the magic uh, who can save the princess? And you know who is behind the disappearance? You know, is some greater evil at play that threatens a lot more than Angela's life? So these are all things that factor in. Uh, this it's a complicated conspiracy involves possession, uh, dark magic, um, and evil of enormous proportions um, that are, are lurking, awaiting uh, behind what seems to be initially more of a straight up, uh, almost like a fantasy mystery thriller, right? So if you like that sort of stuff, if you like uh, fantasies that have a mystery element, a thriller element, uh, you know who did it, who. Stole the princess. That that part is definitely for you. You will love that aspect. Um, so speaking a bit on the characters, um, in a book like this with so many superlative things about it, um, you know, Jenny Wirt's characterization is, is is just a thing to behold. It's just magnificent. So um, characters like Taskin, uh, Mikhail, um, uh, you know, Vesnik. Josud, Bennett, and, and all the main and supplementary characters, they're, they're fully realized, okay? And they're drawn out in this exemplary fashion by Jane Words. They're, they're laid bare uh, for all their negative and positive traits, um, their complexities, and their, their motivations. And the realism of these characters is just incredible, and, and 
And Jenny makes us feel the pain, the joy of the characters, the physical, mental, emotional turmoil in a way that, you know, we weep with them, we laugh with them. Um, and, and while the secondary characters are amazing, you know, I need to really speak mostly about the primary ones. Um, and then they were brilliant. So first, let's let's talk about Mikhail. Um, Mikhail is, for me, um, he is one of the most memorable characters in fantasy fiction ever. Um, you know, and I relate to uh, this character personally um, on a level that, um, you know, I have not related to um, many characters that I've read. And, um, you know, Mikhail, he's he's a man out of place. Um, he's under siege. He's constantly dealing with the ill will of others directed towards him. Um, you know, and again, I'm not saying I've experienced uh, what Mikhail has gone through to the same degree. I'm just saying that I definitely relate to him, you know, because of how he was drawn. So uh, Mikhail has to deal with all the the, the bigotry um, that interferes with everything good that he tries to accomplish. Um, he's constantly demanded to prove himself. Um, and, and however, it's unlikely that he he ever does will will suffice. Will measure up. Um, yet um, he's so certain in his, in his convictions. He's superbly skilled, he's brave, and, and I believe that that the reader, or you as a reader, will root for this guy to overcome all the odds and demonstrate, you know, that all the all the animosity and the mistrust and everything, you know, uh, towards him, it was just so wrong and just so misplaced. Um, so uh, Taskin, um, you know, he, he, he really impresses too. Um, he becomes this unlikely ally of Mikhail and and due to Taskin's exacting nature, you know, his own um, natural sense of suspicion and political acumen, you know, and his unwavering loyalty uh, and long, you know, he has a long service history with the royal family. Um, you know, he, he he's an impressive character. Um, and I and I and I love Taskin's character. He was refreshingly honest and 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 refreshingly principled. Um, you know, and also with Sharon for, especially amidst um, a court that largely uh, exhibit a lot of prejudice and unfairness towards uh, Mikhail Taskin. If there's one thing he is, is he's fair. Um, so Wirtz, Jenny Wirtz, um, she was brilliant in conceiving these two contrasting leads. Taskin, he's the insider, okay, and versus Mikhail, who's the outsider. Um, so yeah, this, this, these two main characters and all the characters in the book were, were, were really unforgettable, but these two main characters here were just phenomenal. So in terms of, you know, um, what this no novel, the pacing of this novel, what type of novels, it's definitely character driven. Um, she drives up, Jenny drives the plot forward. Um, it's very steady. Um, it's not too leisurely, but it's not too quickly either. She, she builds this complete picture of the characters, the setting, and the problems, the issues that drive the action. Um, you know, at the time, this was my second book that I read from Jane Words when I read this. Um, and, um, you know, just like when I read Curse of the Mistrate, which was the first book I read by Jane Words, and Curse of the Mistrate is the first book in her uh, main series, The Wars of Light and Shadow. Um, you know, there, there, there's this juncture where in this book and in Curse of, in Curse of the Mistrate, you think you've reached that that defining moment, that climatic moment, but you have it. It's just really the beginning of the action and 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 the best parts of the book are still to come. And that's amazing. Um, and then that's the point where you'll be completely unable to put this book down. Um, and I felt the same way about Curse of the Mystery. Um, the world building this book, um, as I expected from Jenny Wirtz, having read uh, Curse of the Mystery, like it's just astounding. Um, it's even more astounding um, when we consider that um, this is a standalone novel, um, but everything feels so complete, as if you're reading, you know, Jenny's main series, which is eleven books. Um, they, they know backstory, history, lore, geography, you know, um, setting. It, it's it's all so vivid. Um, you know, it's woven seamlessly into the plot. It feels so organic. You know, it, it the world building. Jenny's it's painstakingly created uh, for a single novel. It has several detailed map, including a map of the principal city, um, you know, and the immediate environs around uh, Cecily. And there's also a map of the surrounding realms. Like, 
you know, you get this in a standalone, you know, that's that's pretty comprehensive, right? Uh, there's also glossary of characters. Um, you know, I, I mean, essentially, in the standalone, Jenny Wirtz has left No Stone Unturned uh, in an effort to um, completely absorb us as the readers in this, and, and this is the, the time period, the time frame uh, which this this book takes place in, in, in this fictional world is, it's essentially a five-day escapade and you're journeying through uh, Cecily and beyond, and 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 you're gonna feel the way Jenny does such a good job of, of painting uh, this world. That you're gonna feel like you're walking through the exalted halls of, of the Sanctuary Pinnacle, uh, and, or hanging out with the soldiers um, in the barracks of the Garrison Keep, or or facing the horrors of Hell's Chasm, uh, the titular uh, place here that uh, that that that's going to be um, quite interesting. Uh, when you read that. Um, so so Jenny puts you right there in the moment uh, with all the senses engaged, you know, the, the sights, the sounds, the hearing, the taste, the smells. It's just glorious world building. Uh, and the magical system, uh, you know, I won't get too much into it, but let's just say it's wonderful. It's wild. Um, it's mysterious. It's foreboding. And it's, and it's, and it's very well constructed. So um, now when we talk about Jenny Wirtz books, um, what most people who read these books talk about and rave about more than anything else, despite the fact that Janie is such a phenomenal writer in so many aspects, people, including me, you know, we, we talk about the pros. Um, so, so let's 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 break that down. Let's get into some some analysis of the pros here. So, I'm the first one to say I understand why Janie Worth pros might not be for everybody. Um, you know, a lot of lots of a lot of uh, readers they want um, you know what they're looking for in their writing. You know, they want a little humor, they want a little action, they want a little drama, and a, they want a plot that barrels forward when let's see the conclusion. And, and you know, some readers really enjoy that. Um, for those readers, the words on the page and how they're said and what they say may or may not be as important. And there's nothing wrong with wanting uh, books that 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 don't require. A, a level of attention that you know uh, that books that Jenny Wirtz writes frequently uh, do. Um, so to be clear, it's not like her writing isn't like a nesting egg doll. Though reading it can make you feel that it is. Um, like she doesn't take you down continuing rabbit holes um, to get to the other book. Like everything is related back to the main plot, and the words are not there to to overwhelm you with detail for the sake of detail itself. But it's that it's to keep you immersed completely in the story and to maximize use of of almost every word possible um, in the English language. At least that's what it feels like. So you know, um, for me, her writing's unparalleled. It, it it's it and it's quintessential. Um, there's so much nuance of meaning in every single world. There's so many words. Sorry. There's so many. Um, layers of complexity uh, in a line of words, um, so many emotions and details and, and plot revelations or paragraph. Um, this book is approximately 650 pages. Um, uh, however, it feels like it's, it, it's, it's, it, it feels like it's more, but in a good way. You know, for me, uh, Jenny's writing is, is never too verbose. Too verbose. It's, 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 it never drags the plot. Um, and she packs so much meaning into into the words she uses, and it's a skill that she possesses that, in my opinion, is is just unmatched. So, um, you know, Jenny's prose is I've always said it's it's like no other, and I lose myself in her writing, and I, I will give my left arm to be able to write like like Jenny words. So um, again, her prose is just just stupendous. Um, you know, for me, any good book. Uh, themes are a big part of that. Um, you know, I, I'm someone who needs to be engaged in the topical stuff in the book. I need, I need to, you know, you need to grab me uh, with the themes that you explore, and, and Janie does does that in spades. Um, the, the 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 prejudice, the mistrust, the disdain, even uh, like the outright hatred. Um, you know that. So we're talking about racism here and, and bigotry. So racism is the one theme for me that was front and center, um, and and that really grabbed me. And, and, and being a racialized person, it, it really, really 
spoke to me. Um, you know, um, Mikhail is black. Um, he's a foreigner to uh, Cecily. He's denigrated with such terms as, um, you know, desert, uh, desert bread cur. Um, you know, he's, he's, it's all because of the color of his skin, right? Uh, and the fact that he's not from, from Cecily. And, 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 but the, the aplomb and the grace and frankly, the, the bravery um, with which Jenny deals with the, the bigotry and how she confronts it um, in this book and how Mikhail um, is depicted, it's confronted, it's, 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 it's wonderful. And she needs to be commended for this, I believe. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not sure she, she ever has been properly recognized for how courageously and unflinchingly she tackled this very sensitive topic. Um, Jenny should be praised with a question for what she's done in this regard with, with this, this book. Um, and because of that, especially because of that theme, some of the passages in this book were so moving and it felt so authentic um, in its representation of, of like what racism looks like, how it feels, um, that at times, yeah, it, it brought me to tears. Um, there's one part in particular in the book that, that will be with me forever. Um, it, it wasn't by far the most, like the most harsh example of racial slurs or animosity towards a Mikiel that appears in the book, but but it was the saddest for me. Um, so I'm going to, if you'll indulge me, I'm going to I'm going to find it and I'm going to read its bookmark, like many passages are here. Um, Who's lost their beer to the rumor? I can't ride. Both men look sheepish. The garrison captain was quick to commiserate. I'd buy you a brew to remedy your loss if I had any coin, any loose coin myself. The prospect of such camaraderie with a foreigner made the guardsmen more uncomfortable still. Mikhail's grin widened the flash of white teeth under the cloak just raised to mask the embarrassment of their origins. Think well on that, he murmured in the same tone used before on the gilding. So to put that in context, you know, Mikhail, the, the, the garrison captain, is, you know, having a moment where, you know, you know, he's with fellow soldiers and, and there's this expectation of camaraderie amongst all of them, uh, irrespective of, of, of color, race, etc. But 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 that isn't there. And 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 as Jenny, um, you know, plainly points out, she says the prospect of such camaraderie with a foreigner made the guardsmen more uncomfortable. And you know, um, that really hit me. Um, you know, it's it's funny. Like I said, this wasn't the most the most um, you know overt example of, of of the kind of things that Mikkel deals with. But it was, it, it just, it really struck me uh, that, that this, this guy, he couldn't even establish what we normally be, that from camaraderie with, with people in the, in the military profession, but, you know, because he, he was who he was. And, and that really, it saddened me, it struck me, it, it just, it's really affected me. So it's just, it was just beautiful writing, though. Uh, it was beautiful writing. Um, you know, because so much of this book is about Mikhail's, um, his nobility, and his his dogged determination to you know succeed, um, you know, and, and save the princess, um, you know, despite all this opposition to his involvement because of of prejudice, um, you know, and, and sometimes you know it can be really heartbreaking to read, but but it, it's worthwhile to read as well. So, um, in conclusion, I, I guess you know I've been I've been gushing about about you know this book and and um, you know. Jenny Wirtz, um, you know, as I've said before, to me, is an iconic author. She needs to be mentioned with, you know, the, the, the George R. R. Martins and the Robin Hobbs and the Robin Jordans. She's contemporaries of, of those iconic writers. And, and, and she needs to be mentioned with them um, because of the caliber of her work. Um, having favorite, of course, is about personal taste. And, and my rationale for Wirtz becoming my favorite won't be yours. Um, you know, all the, the writers I mentioned and more, they're, they're you know, people they're, they're they're incredible storytellers they um create unforgettable characters they have outstanding prose they have a distinctive writing style um the difference with for me i think with words compared to those other iconic writers that i've read is that she's at least the equal 
of those great writers in terms of those other categories. Um, and I still think she's the most underappreciated, um, save for the pros. And, you know, the pros, um, you know, no other writer I've read writes in a manner that forces you as a reader to read every word. It, it's it, the pros simply the most lush, the most complete pros that you're going to find. Um, and, and on top of the pros, and I already talked about the pros ad nauseum perhaps, but you forgive me because I, I do gush about it. Um, not a lot of authors <laughs> are world-class illustrators of their own books. Um, so you add that to the equation. I mean, the pictures of, of, of in this book, I was fortunate enough, blessed enough to get this uh, signed copy from Jenny. And uh, just the illustrations, I mean, you know, she is a world-class illustrator. The book is just beautiful, um, you know, and and really brings these characters to life, you see. And uh, uh, Taskin and, and Mikhail on the cover, like, this is just, it's just fantastic. So um, that concludes my review. Uh, that is why, uh, for me, To Ride Tells Chasm is um, not only my favorite fantasy standalone book. It's my famous, famous, it's my favorite story fantasy book, period. Um, you know, uh, this book needs more attention. Um, I think that if you give it a chance, um, whether or not it becomes your favorite, I believe that you will um, love and appreciate why this book is so good. So, um, you know, To Ride Tells Chasm again, um, you can purchase it uh, on, on Amazon. Um, check out the Goodreads, the Goodreads reviews. There's been many uh, deep dives uh, into this book on, on BookTube. So punch into Ride Tells Chasm and Jenny Wirtz, and you can see some, some wonderful analysis by some great booktubers about this book. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this review. And uh, again, you know, uh, thank you for listening. Um, this is, uh, you know, my my favorite, um, you know, fantasy book of all time, to write tells cousin. Thank you for listening.